You're watching Cable 8, Greensboro Community Television. Started, but it's years and years and years. Before I went to New York High School, we used to play in the street. There was a there was a, there was a lot, empty lot, about two blocks from our house, uh, right by the Southern Railway tracks, um, and there was a huge magnolia tree. And my cousin Emo used to play there also. We, we, he was older than we. They were. But he used to hit baseball over that, over that magnolia tree. We used to play baseball down there. It was an empty lot, vacant lot, so we played down there. We played in the streets. You know, no traffic in those days. It was the best experience ever. I mean, at all times you can go outside and play. I learned more about baseball playing stickball and wiffle ball and with my friends than I ever did playing for any coach. You know, you just learn the game, and I was a big Met fan and watched the Mets all the time on WOR, and that's how I learned baseball. I didn't learn it from coaches, and, you know, coaches helped me when I got older, but uh, growing up in New York was unbelievable. You could walk outside, and you can play a nine-on-nine -nine baseball game at the park. On Christmas, you either got a baseball, a glove, or a bat. That's what we got for Christmas. And that Christmas day, if it's a nice day, or I'm sorry, and a pair of skates, so if it's a nice day, we out there on the baseball field with your new glove and your new ball. Somebody got to have a new ball. Somebody better bring your ball to that to that to that facility, so we can play ball. And it was good to hit. With, you know, and if if you got if most of the time guys would it would last for a while, or you might hopefully you can get a cotton seed ball. Back then they had cotton seed balls, but uh, hopefully you got a hard baseball. And uh, and we used to play all the time. We stayed out there from day in to day out playing baseball. It was, it was real good to me because we were raised on a farm. We didn't get a chance to do anything. You know what I'm saying, except farm, but playing baseball was a uh, genius to me. Out in the streets, we played stickball pitching, stickball fungo, wiffle ball. We played block against block, court against court, neighborhood against neighborhood. It was just great. War Memorial Stadium the home of local heroes like Emo Shofi, where legends like Clay Hopper, Johnny Mize, Jim Buescher, Don Button, Guy Moose Morton, Don Locke, Ken McBride, guys like Tom Tresh, Mel Stoudemire, Kurt Belfry, Bobby Mercer, Frizz Peterson, John Mayberry, Don Mattingly, and Otis Nixon. Guys like Greg Gagne, Kurt Schilling, Scott Cooper, Eddie Taubensey, Reggie Sanders, Sterling Hitchcock, Andy Pettit, Jorge Posada, and Derek Jeter got their start. It is the place where Ted Williams hit a home run over the right field fence. Jackie Robinson came three times to play. 
Satchel Paige and Mickey Mantle played exhibition games here as well. The stadium saw so many teams play here from minor league and collegiate, American Legion, textile baseball games, local football games, and track meets. On April 6th, 1917, America declared war on Germany and immersed itself into the Great War. It was called the War to End War. Soon after, people registered with the military. Many more were drafted. We shall fight for things which we have always carried nearest our hearts. For democracy, for the right of those who submit to authority to have a voice in their own government. For the rights and liberties of small nations, for a universal dominion of right by such a concert of free peoples as shall bring peace and safety to all nations and make the world itself at last free. In 1917, 3,402 people registered in Greensboro for the draft. On June 5th, 1918, another 203. August 24th, 1918, another 53 were added. September 1918, 4,148 registered. Of those, 3,023 were white, and 1,018 were black. Word soon reaches home of family members and friends that will not make it back to the states alive. Word soon reached home of a young man named John C. Paisley, a lieutenant who was killed in action in France. His obituary writes, a lover of sports, Paisley easily made the varsity and in every gridiron struggle fought gamely and well. He was cool calm, unearing, and those that knew him best cherished the thought that his last battle with the Huns and death went across the blood-soaked battlefield at France, unafraid, and died like a soldier. Days before the War Department can notify her, Mrs. Paisley receives a letter from her son. Don't ever worry about me, he wrote. I'm like that boy who wrote his parents from over here. If you ever get news of my death, don't have any mourning around, and no black is to be worn. It should be a celebration, and you should feel that you had bought several liberty bonds, and that you had given your bit for a great cause. I am thoroughly happy. We have reached France, and we now have a chance to do something. Let come what may now, we will do our duty, and get back if it is God's will. I am thankful to him, and to you, my dear mother, that I was born, born of Christian parents, born of pure blood, and God helping me, I will always keep it pure. Now you be thankful that you gave birth to me, and that you have given me to such a cause. 
I'll fight until the last. And then I hope I'll come home. But if I do not, you may know that I fell with my face towards the foe, and that I fell a Christian, and that we will not be long separated. The article continues, The question should be pertinent to every man, woman, and child in Guilford. Paisley has given his life. What are you doing? What have you given? Almighty God, our Father, Bless these boys who have gone from us. They are in a peculiar sense the representatives not only of our countries but of our churches, our homes, our families, ourselves. Indeed, it seems that now we have an indication of thy feelings when thou didst send thy son, part of thy very self, to the great warfare of the cross. Be with these boys as thou wast with thy son. In the distant countries of strife, keep them clean. May they be as strong to resist the enemy from within as the foe across the trenches. May they conquer temptation as did that other son, our elder son. Keep them brave. May they never lose heart, whether it be in the midst of battle or during the long days and nights of discipline when there is nothing to do but wait and watch. Keep them safe amidst the whining bullets and bursting shells, the gas waves and the liquid fire. Wilt thou walk with them as in the fiery furnace, so that though a thousand fall at their side and ten thousand at their right hand, it shall not come nigh them. But if they must be smitten, if they are to lie on cots of suffering or in shallow dug graves, may it not be in vain that they give their lives and we the light of our heart. The Roaring Twenties Cone Mills was booming in Greensboro, becoming the world's largest producer of denim. In 1923, the Jefferson Pilot Building was raised, standing 17 stories high. On October 31, 1927, the Carolina Theater opened its doors to the public. In 1926, Route 66 is established. Ty Cobb resigns as Detroit Tigers manager. And building begins for a useful war memorial to the youth of Guilford County, dedicated to those fallen soldiers in the Great War. The question of a suitable memorial is discussed. An athletic field for the use of local schools, both city and county, the Legion felt that there could be no more fitting memorial than to provide a place where the youth of the community could develop body and character through wholesome recreation. A living memorial service that is what Greensboro Memorial Stadium will be to us, to our children, and to our children's children. On November 9th, 1925, a campaign began to raise funds for a memorial and a community came together. No matter what the toll is here tonight, no man has done his duty until he has contributed. Everyone must feel that he or she has had a part in this. $107,000 was raised by 13,500 individuals, including 9,000 school children. Well, War Memorial Stadium, I can remember my dad talking about how the um, school kids were asked to save their pennies so that they could build War Memorial Stadium. It was a tribute to the World War I uh, veterans. The Cone family donated 11 acres of land for the building of the stadium. A great deal of money was raised from the community. It came from all sorts of people. 
The Cone family, who was influential in Greensboro, happened to own this land, and they donated the property for the stadium to be built. Other people donated uh, money ranging from just a few cents on the dollar up to hundreds and thousands of dollars. Uh, so it was a community-wide effort to build the building. Uh, people put in their volunteer time to make this happen. So it was really the community rallying around in the mid-1920s, 1924, 1925. They would put advertisements in the newspaper as a fund drive to get people to donate funds for the stadium. So it really was an, a fully uh, uh, community effort, fully engaged community effort to get this uh, accomplished. The stadium was designed by Harry Barton and Leonard White. White himself a World War I veteran, with H.R. Cridland, a landscape architect from Philadelphia, and C.B. McIntosh of High Point laid out the track and field. The cost of the stadium was around $165,000. A law had been enacted giving the city the right to purchase the land to be used for a World War Memorial Athletic Park and provide for proper maintenance, upkeep, and control of the same. Construction began on July 14th, where over 2,000 barrels of cement 20 cars of crushed stone and 12 cars of sand were crushed, poured, and constructed into the most magnificent memorial in Guilford County. 50 cars of cylinders were driven in to complete the quarter mile track. Over 10,000 feet of pipe were used to make the grounds usable immediately after it rained. Some 120 artisans and workers, along with 50 mules, a steam shovel, eight large trucks and three smaller ones, two concrete mixers and a derrick, among other pieces of equipment, built the stadium. The project has been a gigantic one, and there is little doubt that the War Memorial Stadium will be a distinct credit to the American Legion, the city of Greensboro, and Guilford County. This plot of land was a thick swamp, one resident described, heavy with underbrush. Construction work on the Guilford County War Memorial Stadium, already presenting its final appearance, which promises to give Greensboro the finest athlete plant in the South. When all is said and done, however, the success of such field in the eyes of the general public is its success in staging the famous contests of the section games in which partisans pour out the last full measure of loyal enthusiasm. W.E.B. Price, the Charlotte Observer. The, the building was designed uh, by uh, Harry Barton, who was an influential architect here in Greensboro. Barton chose an architectural motif that sort of combined uh, exotic uh, Mediterranean uh, architecture, which is seen in the stucco walls and the arches on the building, on the facade. Uh, with sort of a, an a Art Deco uh, motif too. Art Deco was sort of a popular uh, architectural style that came from Paris in the mid-1920s. Uh, it involved um, stylized architectural motifs that were roughly based on classical themes. Um, but it was a very, uh, it was streamlined, it was very solid and very symmetrical in its design. And you can see that articulated in the facade of the stadium. Um, the building was built primarily out of concrete, which was an affordable material at that time. Uh, it's supplemented with steel, structural steel, and uh, it was originally built to be a giant uh, oval, like uh, you would see maybe at a high school with, a, with an elliptical track. Um, and not all of it was built at the beginning. They, it would have been a massive stadium, one of the largest in North Carolina had it been uh, fully articulated but the, the entire scheme was not built out fully. It was uh, essentially completed in the shape of a J. Uh, so the, the lower semicircle was there and one of the, the, the long lines, which sort of makes a J shape. Uh, back in the day, the stands, the bleachers extended way beyond the left field fence. Uh, they went way on past, but that was just a um, leftover from the time when it was actually built as a, as a football stadium. And the, as a result of that, the lights were very low. They weren't high enough really for a legitimate baseball stadium. And I used to hear uh, a lot of the players, our players and a lot of the visiting teams complain that the lighting in the stadium was really bad. And you could lose a, a high pop-up uh, because the lights just weren't high enough.
So that, that, that made it very, very interesting. Um, and that was retained all the way up until uh, just a few years ago, and a portion of it was uh, removed and, and the J was made a little bit shorter. So all in all, it's uh, a significant structure for its architecture, uh, for Harry Barton, its architect and designer, uh, for its architectural themes of Art Deco and, and Mediterranean architecture, and its unique construction method, which is out of concrete. Today, eight years ago, the crown of victory was given to the armed forces of the Allied and Associated Nations. And today, the heart of every true patriotic American is moved with emotion and the mind of every American reverts to that Armistice Day in 1918, when the war ended and peace has come. It is fitting that we have assembled here on the day to dedicate this stadium as a memorial to the memory of those men of Guilford County who gave their lives to a great cause. The members of the American Legion are to be congratulated upon the idea of erecting such a suitable memorial and the everlasting gratitude of the people of Guilford County should be extended to the citizens of Greensboro and contributors who have made this memorial possible. The soldier boys said they wanted no hollow granite, no useless monument to decorate our street corners, even no sanctuaries or brass to remind us of those who have passed along after doing life's full duty. But they wanted something that would be useful, that would help develop mind and body, that would in this way be a perpetual memorial to those who have passed. That those of us who follow after should use our best efforts to make ourselves physically fit, to answer any emergency. And when the call to duty comes, answer with clear, strong voice. We are ready to do. The stadium was constructed specifically for track and field. In its first year, it held the state track meet. Well, when I first went down and saw it, I was floored by the names and the people that was up there on that little plaque, and that it was a gift to the city. That was, and I thought, what a wonderful thing that these people did for uh, the city. And the Memorial Stadium was just that type of uh, setting. It was very different uh, based on the way it was built. You know, uh, in the back you had the tennis courts behind there, the lights was on back there also. And uh, just playing the stadium just it was amazing, just, you know. Pretty good, and a lot of crowd. They did, they had great, great crowds down there through most of it. And part of it was because of the way the stadium was shaped. If you remember, <clears throat> it's one of the few stadiums that the sun's behind you. It's in the outfielder's eyes, but it's behind the, the general uh, crowd. But it's been a, a part of uh, Greensboro's community and uh, the fabric of this, this town for, since it was built. It's, uh, it's a very, it has been, in the past, a very important structure. Um, uh, all the games that were played here, all of the, uh, the major uh, baseball stars that have played here over the years. Well, I think War Memorial Stadium is unique for me for a couple reasons. There's the little trivia part that it was built as a football stadium and then adapted for baseball. But then it's also a time of rallying for something very different. Greensboro citizens rallied together to raise the money within a matter of weeks to build a stadium in honor of their war dead from the Great War, from World War I. And that gives it um, a special significance to me. I always thought that the columns were majestic from the time that I was a little girl to even now driving by. And they obviously have an allure because people want to come here and feel here, uh, film here, even George Clooney, right, for his football movie. So um, when I think about the players who play there, the dreams that have begun there, um, 
living out a dream, even if minor league baseball was were, were as far as you were going to go. Uh, the family outings, the ways that Greensboro have embraced the baseball players and encouraged them on their route, that's all the part of the aura of the stadium. And now with young people playing there and college teams playing there, it's taken on a different life. Man, I, I was impressed. I, I had never played in a stadium like that, you know, because at, uh, at, at Kearney, it, it was, uh, uh, you know, that stadium was just built, uh, you know, a War Memorial Stadium. It, it was, man, when you when I walked up to that thing, I said, goodness, that feels like I'm going into Yankee Stadium. <laughs> because Carney and, uh, and Modesto were, you know, the stadiums were much, much smaller. I went there no, a good number of times, oh yes, oh yes. Many times I went to watch the games over there. And mostly, of course, mostly uh, local games, Greensboro team here. Uh, and when my cousin Emo would play, if he would come here, if he's in that same league, I would go, I'd always watch it, always watch the games then. We're talking about Memorial Stadium, mm -hmm. right? Well, uh, Memorial Stadium, I go back to 1940 at Memorial Stadium. Mm -hmm. Uh, I moved here from uh, a little mountain town in Kentucky, Middlesboro, when I was in the ninth grade, and uh, my father was with Bluebell. They had closed a plant over there and moved us all to Greensboro. Bluebell is the precursor of uh, VF, in case you don't realize that. <laughs> they were the world's largest manufacturer of work clothing. I guess they still are, maybe. They made overalls then, that was their staple. But we moved here and I had an aunt and uncle who lived in Greensboro, uh, my Aunt Inez and Uncle Kenneth. And one of the first things they did, I was very unhappy about having to move. You know, a high school kid moving at that age, it's pretty tough. And, you know, I was a big Tennessee football fan, uh, Kentucky basketball fan, Cincinnati Reds, and Joe Lewis were my heroes. Uh, but anyway, they were trying to make me happier, and one of the things they did, they drove me to Memorial Stadium to take a look at it, and I was just blown away by it. It just, I had never seen anything up close, you know, like that. There's no television, of course, and so I'd seen some still pictures of baseball parks like Crosby Field in Cincinnati, for instance. But I was just blown away by how beautiful it was, and in, in, in those days, let's see, in 1940, it was built in 24, is that, what is it? Uh, 26. 20, 26, well, it was exactly the same as the year I was born. So it was, it was 14, it was only 14 years old then. And you can imagine how beautiful it was. Everything was, was relatively new. And, and uh, of course, I've been in love with it ever since. I, and in a way, it, uh, it played a role in, in, uh, in my becoming a newspaper person anyway.